Hey there everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to be diving into how you can automate cross-platform flat builds or packaging using GitHub Actions. So without wasting more time, let's dive directly into this interesting subject. So for those of you who are not familiar with the term GitHub Actions, it is essentially this GitHub tool which permits you to automate tasks within your GitHub repository. So you can create custom workflows that trigger on specific events like pushes, pull requests, or even on a schedule. These workflows can help you automate testing, building, and deployment of your code. The first thing you need to get started is obviously a GitHub repository containing your application files. So I have this simple Ethica counter repository I created some months ago while doing a YouTube video on how to deploy a flat web application on GitHub pages using GitHub Actions. So the application we built in that video. So it is deployed on GitHub pages and this is the application still working. Now that you have a GitHub repository containing your application files, the next step is to obtain the workflow files. Head over to this repository of mine named Flat GitHub Action Workflows and inside it you are going to find a collection of GitHub Action Workflows I came up with. So under the file structure you have this table with the different files contained in this repository and what they build. So over here we have the AB build.yaml for instance which builds an AB bundle. We have the Windows build for instance which builds a Windows application and we have combined builds like the desktop build which builds all the desktop applications so for all the three desktop platforms. We have the desktop and mobile builds which build for the three desktop platforms and equally for the mobile platforms so AAB, APK and IPA for iOS. So you can click on this .github workflows link over here to learn on the directory containing all the workflow files. In today's video, we are going to be looking at this one over here because it's the most complex. So let me briefly explain the content of this workflow file. We have the name of the workflow. Under the on, we have the events which trigger the execution of this workflow. So here the push to any of the following branches is going to trigger the execution of this workflow. Any pull request that targets any of these branches is also going to trigger the execution of this workflow. Here we have the workflow dispatch. So it simply permits you to run this workflow from the actions tab. So under env, we have the different environment variables. You can see this link over here for the first two. So build number and build version. They are explained in this link to the flat documentation. We have the Python version being used. We have the Flutter version being used. Here we have the different jobs. So the first job is build Linux. It is running on Ubuntu, the latest version. So this is the first step. We check out the code. The next step is to set up Python. So we set up Python 3.12.2 as mentioned over here. Then we set up Flutter. And for Linux, we need this patch for Linux build, which simply installs these dependencies required by the Linux build. So after that, we are building the Linux application. The first thing we do is to disable Flutter Analytics. So if you want to enable Flutter Analytics, you can see we get rid of this line and here we run the flat build linux command in verbose mode pass to it the build number and the build version defined in the environment variables above and here we upload the linux artifact so the name of the linux artifact is going to be linux build artifact and it is found in build slash linux so this is where this flat build linux command outputs the resulting file under build slash linux so we are grabbing the result of that and packaging it into this artifact name linux build artifact if no files are found then a warning should be thrown then we move to the next job which is build macOS. it runs on macOS. from here you can already see the benefits of using github actions so you can use different runners for the linux build we made use of ubuntu latest and for the macOS build we are making use of macOS latest so for macOS, it's exactly the same thing. We check out the code, set up Python, install the dependencies, set up Flutter, and then build the application and store the artifact or upload the artifact with the name macOS build artifact. So it's exactly the same thing for all of the others. So what you do once you've located the file you're about to use, you simply have to copy it. So click on this copy button, copy raw file, move to your repository. And inside your repo, you need to have this .github slash workflows. If you don't have it, simply click on add file, create a new file. And from here, so you can see I'm at the root of the repository. I'm going to type in this .github. It's already present, so it's not going to get created once more. And under .github, you need this workflows. And inside this workflows directory needs to be stored your workflow file. So you can name this file as you want, but please don't forget the .yaml extension. 
and inside it you are simply going to paste the content of the file you copied feel free to make modifications according to your project repository so if you need to change the branch you can change the branch from here it's all up to you so please take your time and go through it i added comments and equally in the repository i explained everything inside this readme file so please take your time and simply go through it try to understand what is happening and adjust it to your needs so assuming every change has been done i'm going to commit the changes and then the commit message i can leave the default and i'm committing to the main branch as you can see from here any push to the main branch is going to trigger the running or the execution of this workflow file and you can see i'm committing directly to the main branch so it's going to be a push to the main branch so this workflow is going to get executed commit the changes you can see the file has been created successfully now the next step is to head over to this actions tab so if you don't see this actions tab in your repository it means it is disabled simply head over to the settings on the actions you click on general and make sure it is allowed so you are probably on this state of disabled actions make sure you have it allowed i'm going to move to the actions and you can see it is running successfully so we have the web build running so this web build is the one i mentioned at the beginning concerning the github pages so that was for the past video what we are looking at today is this all builds i'm going to click on it and you can see how beautiful it looks so because all of our jobs are independent from each other they are all running in parallel So see from this dashboard, you can see a while after that, some builds failed while some builds passed. So clicking on one of the failed builds to understand what happened, you can see over here what went wrong. And by the way, it is running in verbose mode. So when you face an issue and you don't know how to resolve it, simply copy the logs and open an issue on the flat repo. And uh, we are going to discuss on it. So this bug over here has actually been fixed in the latest flat version. So I guess this repository is not up to date. Or the version has been pinned so looking at the requirements of csc file you can see the version has been pinned to a version of four months ago 0.22.0 so over here i'm going to modify it i'm just going to get rid of the pinning and we're going to use flat simple flat so you should take the latest version at all times i'm going to commit the changes still to the main branch so it's going to trigger a rebuild so moving to the action tab, you can see from here it is rebuilding the application and hopefully all of them are going to pass So you can see from here that the build windows failed while all the others passed successfully. Let's have a look. And from here, you can see we have a flat error. Unrecognized argument, no reach output. So this no reach output is an argument that I personally introduced into flat recently. And it is not available in the latest official flat release, which at the time I'm recording this video is 0.23.2. So this argument is available only in the latest flat pre-release. So you can see it from here, flat build windows, and then this no reach output. So to fix that, simply need to install a flat pre-release. I'm going to open the history. And from here, this is the latest flat pre-release. Copy this. Head over to the requirements.csd. I'm going to install the latest flat pre-release. I'm going to commit the changes to the main branch. Move to the action tab. And from here, the workflow is executed. While the application is being built, let me introduce On Demand, the sponsor to this video. It is the world's first decentralized large language operating system designed to speed up product development and manage agency workloads. On Demand is your AI powered agent, supports your business with a variety of language models in the playground and provides seamless integration with your face. It has a plugin marketplace where you can create and publish free or monetized plugins. You can also make use of already created plugins by simply searching or filtering for those you need. Now let's look at two examples. In the aviation industry, on demand can enable developers to create custom AI solutions that integrate real time data and provide instant updates, enhancing the efficiency and effectiveness of aviation services. A second example, we have event management. On demand can facilitate intelligent systems that streamline event planning or offer real time updates, making event coordination seamless and efficient. On demand revolutionizes interaction with language models. Whether you are a simple user, a startup, or an established business, on demand provides the tools and flexibility to create cutting edge AI applications. To learn more and get started, check out the link in the description and join the on demand platform today. So, as you can see, all the builds succeeded. All errors have been successfully fixed. Let's quickly analyze this page. So, over here, you have the different jobs. 
exactly the same as here but here you can see the duration of each of the jobs and uh, from here you have the status success so everything was a success total duration six minutes you can see that if you sum the duration of all of these guys is definitely more than six minutes so they are all being executed in parallel here you have the artifacts produced during runtime you have the name of the six artifacts the compressed sizes here you can download each of them and you can equally delete so I really think that from now on, you can see how advantageous and easy it is to use GitHub Actions to build or package your application for all the platforms. So here you can see I'm not on Windows, but I'm able to build a Windows application. I'm not on Linux, but I'm able to build a Linux application and so on. So it's really advantageous to use GitHub Actions. So that's it for today's video. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more content like this. If you have any questions or face any issues, please drop them in the comments below and I will respond to you as soon as possible. Happy coding!